On behalf of the Independence Chamber of Commerce in the City of Independence, welcome to First Friday. As always, before we get started, we want to thank this morning's business sponsor, Skank Insurance Agency. Our business sponsor this morning is the reason why you get to enjoy Annie Mae's. So I hope everyone got some warm muffins, fresh fruit, and hot coffee. If not, over here at the table, do so. Um, Gary, uh, Gary Skank and his son, Charles Skank, are the um, owners and operators of Skank Insurance. And this morning, they have brought one of their employees with them. So at this time, please welcome Skank Insurance Agency's event coordinator, Michael Anderson. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um, my name is Michael Anderson. We are Skank Insurance LLC, and you did hear that right. It is Skank Insurance. I get asked all the time, is that really pronounced Skank? And I have to say yes. Unfortunately, that's, uh, that's how we say it. Um, Gary Skank, who is uh, sitting over here at the table, he has been our, uh, he, he was for, for years the lone man there at the company. He's the founder and has been in the business for about 40 years. And everywhere I go, uh, people seem to know Gary, and uh, so he's, I think, familiar to many of you. We've actually been here in Independence about, about four years now. Uh, prior to that, Gary was operating over in Altamont. And so uh, I, I wanted to start out by saying, first of all, thank you to Lisa and to the Chamber. Uh, we, we very much appreciate being able to be able to sponsor and to tell a little bit about ourselves. Uh, I think we're very fortunate here in Independence uh, if you're like me and you've, you've lived other places, you know that um, not all Chamber of Commerces are, are, are equal, and we're very lucky here in Independence to have one that is just really phenomenal. They do a lot uh, for the small businesses and for the, uh, to promote the attractions and the things that Independence has that is unique uh, to us, and so we, we appreciate them very much. We also appreciate the community. Uh, we have been, like I said, with, uh, with Cornerstone Plaza, where we're located over there in the old, uh, the old Kmart building. Uh, just about four years now, and the community has been very supportive, and we thank you for that, and uh, thank you for your business. We are over there uh, next to ICC West. If you don't know where we're at, uh, the true value is down on one end, and we're on the other. So uh, very quickly, I just wanted to say a little bit about what we do. Uh, we are an independent insurance agency. Um, a lot, we, we approach things a little bit different. Uh, a lot of insurance agencies, when you come in, their main goal is to sell you a policy. Um, that's not our main goal. Now, obviously, we, we occasionally do that, which is a good thing. Uh, helps us to keep in business, but uh, our main goal is to help people to uh, navigate and to manage their risk and um, to do that in the way that is most affordable to them. And you might ask, what do I mean when I say risk? Uh, well, we all take risk. When we get up in the morning, we get out of bed, uh, we get in the car to go to work, uh, we take risks with our health and with our life. Uh, we take money and put it into a retirement account at work. Uh, there's risk involved there. And so we help people in just very plain uh, language how to uh, mitigate that risk and how to do that in the way that is most effective to that. And we do that in several ways. Um, one of the areas that we focus on is the area of what we call forever money. Um, that's the money that you have that you are planning on using to, fu to fund your retirement, um, to get you through your later years and hopefully not just get you through but to be able to do that successfully and enjoyably and um, we have what we call our three financial values that kind of center how we help people in that regard and our first principle is um, it is uh, I just drew a blank on it there but it is a, a protection of your principle um, from market decline basically if, if the stock market takes a hit and um, it is going down, your money does not. So that's our number one principle. Two is a reasonable rate of return. And three is that we keep it simple. We are very pretty, pretty simple folks in our office. Uh, we do not believe that uh, retirement planning has to be a long, complicated thing. And so uh, we help people to manage their risk in retirement and to do that successfully. And we don't throw a lot of uh, jargon and a lot of numbers at people when they sit down and meet with us. We also do uh, life insurance. Uh, Medicare supplements, if you are 65, you're turning 65, or you know somebody who is, or you, you maybe hope to be at some point, um, uh, the Medicare system is, is a very daunting, kind of complicated thing. Gary's been working in that system for many years now, and he knows it inside and out. So uh, we help people increasingly uh, a great deal in that area. I just met with a guy. I saw him at a men's breakfast at my church this weekend, and he was saying, boy, I sure, sure like that Medicare supplement you guys 
put me on. He said, I, you know, I, I, I can't believe how much money I'm saving on that every month. I don't know why anybody would want to do anything else. As an independent agency, uh, when you come in and meet with us, we're not just going to talk to you about company A because we work for company A, and that just happens to be the one we're going to try to, uh, to uh, talk to you about. As an independent agency, uh, we're going to talk to you about the benefits of company A, company B, company C, all the way down to Z, and we're going to find what is best for you and what is the most affordable. Um, our clients are, we call them our client family. We have a lot of clients here in the Independence area. We try to do special things for them throughout the year, and we just really enjoy having the opportunity to sit down and visit with folks. And so um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I did want to say again how much we appreciate the community here in Independence. Um, we would very much welcome you to come and sit down and join us. Um, if you would like to learn more about what we do in terms of money, that's, like I said, a big area of ours. We do what we call financial seminars, and one of my jobs is to plan those. We're going to be doing one of those later this month on the 17th at Brothers Railroad Inn out here. Uh, we'll be doing another one on the 18th down at Landings and Coffeeville. And those are free. Uh, if you are getting up to where you're thinking a lot more seriously about retirement, I would uh, invite you to, to uh, think very seriously about coming to one of those. It's a very laid back, enjoyable event. We talk, uh, we have a program. Uh, Charles, Gary's son, gives the program, just kind of talks a little bit about what we do with money, a little bit more, more about our philosophy. And uh, it's just about an hour, and then we have a nice dinner, and we, we buy everybody dinner afterwards, and um, it's just kind of a good opportunity. Our goal is to educate people and for them to feel good about what they are planning to do with their retirement. And so um, that's what we, what we do. It's what we enjoy. It's kind of what gets us out of bed every day. Um, and so if that's something that would interest you, please see me or see Gary afterwards. We have some information we can give you about that. It's free. Um, and uh, all of our, our uh, appointments and our meetings are no obligation, no pressure. We don't like pressure anybody in our office, and so we decided, you know, that's not how we're going to operate. We are different, and uh, we take pride in that. So, again, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, please come see us. Uh, come talk to us. We enjoy meeting new folks and uh, seeing if we can be of service to you. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the, uh, the, the morning and enjoy your breakfast. Thank you. Well, thank all of you. And you um, actually have some information on your tables from Skank Insurance as well. So thank you for that. All right, so First Friday is co-sponsored by the Chamber and the City of Independence. I always want to tell everyone that it's a free event. It's open to the public. You don't have to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce. It's our way of partnering with the city to be able to get out really good, accurate information to all of the citizens of Independence. So um, with that, we're going to share some information with you. The Chamber always tries to be the central hub of what's going on in the community. We, we take pride in collecting lots of good information. So flip your calendars over, and we'll hit the highlights. You know, I usually start with today, but I'm going to back up because yesterday was a banner day. I believe yesterday might have been a significant milestone for our city commissioner, if I'm correct. Gary Hogsett had a birthday yesterday. He rolled his eyes. Gary, why don't you come on up here real quick? We've got something for you. So this says, happy 60th birthday, our own gum buster. Now, you have to guess who had that made for you. <laughs> you do a lot of great things for the community, including this. You, can, you know who to thank for that. Uh-huh. It wasn't me. I'm just the messenger. Okay. So... Um, Tomorrow, big day in Independence. Um, Eclectics Art Gallery is already open for business, but tomorrow morning starting at 7 o'clock, they're going to have their open house and their grand opening. So I encourage you all to go by and check that out. I really think that's a cool store for downtown Independence. It's a way for all of our local artisans to put their um, pieces of artwork in the store and be able to sell those to all of us in the community. So if you think about Eclectics Art Gallery, um, and, and their newness in downtown Independence. You have Jim Hayward's Fine Art, who just celebrated his one-year anniversary in downtown Independence. And the Verdigree Valley Art Exhibit is going on until July the 14th. We have an awesome opportunity to really showcase art in our community. 
at the art gallery. This is just one of the really cool items that you'll find there. And I bring this just to let you know that there's sculpture, there's stained glass, there's painting, there's jewelry, there's dichroic fused glass, there's all kinds of things that are down there. So um, I encourage you all to stop in, um, browse, and even buy some of the really cool things at the Eclectics Art Gallery. Farmer's Market will be tomorrow morning. Check out our Facebook page later on today um, because Carolyn Torrance always sends the chamber all of the latest and greatest about what's going to be available at the market. So be sure and check out our Facebook page later on. Recycling got bumped to this weekend because the city recognized last weekend as the holiday weekend. So um, I know you have all your recyclables ready to go. So please um, turn those in tomorrow from 8 to noon. But also it's the last day to be able to turn in your bottle caps. So if you've been hoarding bottle caps, be sure and turn them in. Hello, Ray. Um, be sure and um, turn them in um, tomorrow because that's the last, the last day for that collection. Um, senior movie night is back, and they will be having um, another senior movie night on July the 11th, and they will be showing Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, Mid-Continent Band has three special um, performances coming up. So the one on the 11th will be featuring solos and ensembles, and then um, the next one will be musicals and marches, and then the following one on the 25th of July, very fitting, we're going to do Christmas in July, and um, we'll have Santa down there. The chamber will have glow-in-the-dark bracelets and popsicles and face painting. And they'll be playing holiday music in the middle of what's sure to be a hot summer evening. So um, be sure and bring your kids down because that's kids' night for that one. And um, YPI is having their summer speaker series. July the 19th will be the next one. Um, the mayor spoke at the previous one. And this one will feature um, our very own city manager, Craig Whitehead, who will be speaking to our young professionals. Main Street is sponsoring a sip and shop on the 20th. And what you need to know about that is that's an opportunity for you to um, shop in downtown Independence. And it's going to be focused on all kinds of fun drinks. So there might be flavored iced teas. There might be lemonades. There might be um, special alcoholic drinks. There are going to be all kinds of um, uh, things for us to partic participate in downtown while we're shopping, kind of a ladies' night, if you if you may. So um, it'll be a fun evening, and you'll see the flyers on the tables that will have um, all the participating stores for that. Um, all Wheels Night will be the third Friday in, in, um, in downtown Independence, and then there will be a kids' night that will be happening in August. The 4-H Fair is going to be happening the last part of July, and then also the last part of July on the 29th, it's a big day in Independence. So if you'll take your finger and get right down onto the 29th, I'm going to tell you that at the Farmer's Market, they will be having the annual Stuff the Bus, and then we'll have the sidewalk sale after that. And then we'll have the Community College will be having their um, golf tournament and their Bunko Extravaganza. So if you want to sign up for that, be sure and do so. Hungry Hungry Hippos, um, we'll, the library is doing Hungry Hungry Hippo Contest, so you can sign up for that. That's a three-person team raising money for the library. And then finally, we will be having Downtown Movie Night, which will be featuring Moana, and you won't want to miss that. We're going to have a fire thrower, some Polynesian dancers, um, lays, limbo, all kinds of fun stuff that night. So um, mark the 29th on your calendar. August the 1st, 2nd, and 4th. Be sure, I think it's, anyway, um, the first part of August, you'll be sending out a flash for that. Um, it's Independence Runs Back to School, and the city and the chamber are working to sponsor a healthy run for our high school athletes that are going back to the fall um, sports, and it's just kind of a kickoff celebration to help them get excited about fall sports and also for all of us to know that it's time to um, be supporting them as they are out on the fields doing their athletic um, events, but they'll be running a two-mile run from Schulte Stadium through the park on those three evenings. So we'll mark those down. And, um, and then, let's see, we have All About Kids Fair the 5th of August with Elk City State Park um, Kids Outdoors. Mark your calendar for that. And I tell you this in advance, August the 12th is the 10th Annual Blake Birdie Triathlon, so start getting fit right now so you can participate in that. And then finally, um, the Chamber is working um, with a committee to put on the Veterans Day Parade, and that will be on November the 11th. And I'm going to tell you that only for the reason um, to mark your calendar for that, because we want a lot of participation. That morning will be a spirit run, um, a 5K spirit run to raise money for the landscaping of the piece of land at Penn and Oak. 
I mean Pin and Oak, Pin and Chestnut, where the old town and country used to be right there. We're working to beautify that. We have a piece of um, uh, bronze statue that will be placed in that area, and so we're working to raise money for um, the beautification and the landscaping. So mark that on your calendar for the Spirit Run. Then we'll have some activities in downtown that day. We'll have meal specials for our military and our veterans. And then we'll have the par- a Veterans Day Parade at um, between 1 and 2 that afternoon. We'll have um, some war memorial celebrations out in the park. And then we'll finish up the day with either the Mid-Continent Band, if you want to listen to um, patriotic music, or if you want to enjoy football, they will be having military night as the Independence Pirates take on um, the Coffeeville Ravens. So I say that because it's a big day in Independence, and um, if you have a business or an organization that wants to participate in that, we want you to. The parade's only going to be as good as our participants, so um, we encourage you all to um, be thinking about how you can be involved in the parade. So... Um, Also, I want to make sure that everyone knows you can always get all information on the website. Um, You can check out our Facebook page, which is Get Independence. Our flyers are over on the table over there. Um, We flash out, and they put it in the newspaper, the What's Up in Independence, so you can always check that out. That's a week at a glance of what's going on. The calendar of events that are on the back of your um, your programs will be flashed out as well and put in the the Independence Reporter. Um, And the community calendar that we tape every week runs on three radio stations four times a day, Monday through Friday. So um, if you have something you want us to share and information you want us to get out into the community, please let us know, and we will do our best. Um, We're going to go ahead and get started. Our speakers are all going to speak. At the end, we'll do some shout-outs. I already have a couple people that want to do some shout-outs, and we'll save all of our questions until the end. So it is time to start with our first speaker. Um, It's always nice to introduce uh, new faces to independence, and um, today is, is a great day to be able to introduce a new face. At this time, please welcome our brand new city manager, Mr. Craig Whitehead. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I've uh, had a chance to watch several of these first Fridays uh, during the recruitment process as I tried to learn more about the community. And um, I noted the last one, last June, before I uh, was getting ready to move here, uh, I noted at the end uh, Commissioner Hogsett made some comments about that I was coming and to welcoming me, and and I appreciated that, and I got a lot of, of uh, welcome emails, which I truly appreciated. We also said something, I'm paraphrasing, that, you know, uh, city manager is a tough position, uh, and he's going to be taking a lot of heat right away. And that could, that could be true. A city manager can, position is, is, it can be that way. And it reminded me of a story that was told in city manager circles. And it was last week I was having lunch with former city manager Paul Sass, and he reminded me of this story about the three envelopes for a new manager. And it goes like this. A new manager comes to town, and he opens his desk drawer, and there's three envelopes in there. One of them is marked crisis number one. Read at crisis number one. Read at crisis. The second one is crisis number two, and the third is crisis number three. So he's going along. The first crisis comes up. So he reads the first envelope, opens up, and it says, blame the previous city manager. Okay, so then it goes along, the second crisis comes up, opens the envelope, says blame the staff. So it goes along, the third crisis comes up, he opens up the envelope, says prepare three envelopes. (laughs) (laughs) That story is often told by city managers for, uh, as you know, good reason. Um, Anyway... I've had some interesting experiences in in my career as as a city manager, and I want to dispel some rumors right now. Uh, Some people have noticed that that I have something under my shirt, and and I tell them it's my six-pack hard abs, you know, but nobody believes that. But uh, Chief Harrison has not issued me a bulletproof vest, (laughs) so it's it's not that. But as I mentioned, I've had some interesting uh, uh, situations in my career, one of them just 
I had a, an employee who was also a mayor. That challenged my integrity on several occasions. Uh, but I've also had a lot of training through mentors and others in culture building in an organization and what that takes. And so I want to touch on a couple of things today regarding our core values in the city of Independence that we're going to be talking a lot about. <clears throat> it's one of my favorite quotes from Walt Disney. Decisions are easy when the values are clear. So we're going to be talking in the city a lot about our values and the core values and what they stand for. And we're going to try to make them part of our organization and the way we work. So I have four main ones, and under each one, there's several subsets of descriptions of those, what they mean, its core values. But the, but the basic ones are inte integrity, commitment, excellence, and teamwork. But I want to talk kind of, uh, um, again, subsets of those, and I, uh, I'll get to that. Um, so we want it to become the way we work, a strong culture in that. Part of that is a commitment to continuous service, continuous improvement. Under excellence, the power of quality, you can see these are some of the statements under there. And the key one I want to focus on is that continuous improvement. That's something we're going to talk a lot about in the city of Independence. Always have an organization where we believe we're always continuing to improve. Early in my career, I read a book called In Search of Excellence. You may have heard of that. Uh, and that's where I first heard the statement, if it ain't broke, fix it. Instead of if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Uh, and so it's always something I learned early about continuous improvement and something I believe strongly and, again, something we're going to be talking about a lot. There's a story I like about Tiger Woods. In 2004, he was considered the best in the game, maybe even of all time. Then he did something very remarkable. And then after he did that, he went on to win three major championships in golf. What did he do? He changed his swing. Even though he was on top of the game, his game, probably considered the best of all time, he changed his swing. So why would he do that? He said, I thought I could become better. And that to me speaks volumes about continuous improvement. Again, even, even if you're at the top of your game, you can still improve. You should be, still be striving to in, in, improve. And again, so that's our commitment in the city of independence is that, again, we're going to make that the way we work. That's a phrase I like to use a lot. And it's going to be part of our mantra, if you will. Now I want to talk briefly about another of our core values and part of that integrity. Uh, you've heard a lot about openness recently or transparency, which is the latest buzzword in the last few years in government. It's something I strongly believe in. Um, that's what I want to focus on. We are respectful and behave in an open and honest manner. I want to relate a personal story, which some of you heard. Uh, in another life, uh, when I was city manager, I was out working with the parks crew mowing lawns. And the crew chief, the supervisor, gave me the, the task of driving at one of those just riding mowers, probably 60-inch deck or whatever, because uh, he probably figured that's all I could handle. And uh, anyway, my assignment was to mow uh, near uh, in this big park, which had a river going by it, a lot of trees, and under the trees and in the grove area. And that was my assignment to, to mow in there with that mower. So I'm, uh, I'd been outfitted as all the staff had. I had my tinted safety glasses um, and my ear protection. So I'm mowing along in this sunny part, and then I go into the, where the tree area is. I can't see with the tinted sunglasses on. So I go like this. And I'm not kidding you, 30 seconds later, bam, something hits me right in the eye. I mean, what are the odds? I didn't hear anything. Um, anyway, I'm, of course, stunned, and it's tearing up, and so I quickly drive back to the supervisor. He takes me to the uh, emergency room. By that time, everything has gone black. I thought I'd blinded myself. And uh, so the supervisor is saying, well, you know, we'll file, the, we'll file this, but we won't 
we, you know, we don't need me to make a big deal about it. We won't make it public. And, and again, that was against my grain. I, I, I believe in openness. So I remembered a song that I'd heard years early called I Can See Clearly Now by Johnny Nash. So I wrote it. I actually had this, the safety officer uh, reprimand me. So I got an official written reprimand. And secondly, I wrote an article for all the employees to, explaining how I had violated the rules by taking off my safety glasses. Uh, so I was very open and, and honest about that, and that's what I believe in, being open and honest personally. The one thing that came out of that is the policy changed. After that, everybody in the mowing, crew, mowing crews got both, sun, both clear and tinted uh, safety glasses. So, again, that's just... A, where I'm coming from. I believe in being very open and honest uh, in myself and in the government. So we're going to try to, again, that's going to be our mantra, open and honest in the city of Independence. Again, this is our culture. And the hard part about this, it's easy to say these words, but the hard part is turning it into action. One of my favorite proverbs is Japanese proverb, vision with action, without action is a dream. An action without vision is a nightmare. <laughs> so that's our vision. It's something, again, we're going to try to inculcate into the organization and make it the way we work. You're going to hear me say that a lot. It's going to be the way we work. So this is our goal, if you will. It's our target. Delivering excellence, excellent services, built around those core values. <clears throat> and so we'll be working hard on that as a team, as an organization, to embed that uh, and make it not just words, but in, in action. So when I first got here, I asked, uh, I was wondering where the organization was in relationship uh, to these core values. And I asked Commissioner Hawks, that, you know, are we uh, lean and mean? And he said, no, we're anorexic and vicious. <laughs> but Woody Hayes once said, uh, you're either getting better or getting worse. So, again, we're tr going to try to be open and honest and focus on that continuous improvement. And that's our target. Again, that's the way we work. And I want to finish with some uh, comments from uh, the, league, the league attorney in, in Utah, his name is David Church. And he wrote an article called, Why Can't We All Just Get Along? And uh, he, he, I don't know when he wrote it, but uh, about every year at the league conference, he would give a talk uh, presentation along these lines, the same lines, because I think he, he just had to keep repeating it over and over. And it was geared toward elected officials, but it's, it's good for any public officials or anybody in an organization or just in life. So I want to just list some of them quickly. All elected officials are worthy of respect, even the ones dumb enough to disagree with you. Your job description does not include the phrase, take full credit, no blame. Win graciously, accept your losses, and move on. And finally, enjoy correcting your own mistakes as much as you do others. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Independence. How long have you been here? A month. A month. All right. Well, we're going to move right along to our next speakers. Um, we have two gentlemen here that are going to speak to us about something that um, has been in Independence before, but is um, coming back to Independence. And I think it speaks volumes to um, the passion and compassion in our community for citizens in need. You know, we have a strong community mission for improved housing. And I think that Habitat for Humanity fits very well into um, that focus to help others. So at this time, would you please welcome Bill Jones and Chuck McFate, who will talk about Habitat for Humanity. Can everybody hear me? I want to make sure that I'm heard. Um, <clears throat> I am Chuck McFate. Uh, I'm the designated speaker this morning. Bill is our technical guy. He put this uh, 
he put this presentation together, and uh, I'm not sure I'm coordinated enough to run the the clicker and and do the talking at the same time. Uh, where is the clicker? Oh, right there. <laughs> See how coordinated I am. Uh, we are both members of the board of Habitat for Humanity of Montgomery County. I see another board member in the audience. Walter Nelson is out here in the audience. He's been a, a board member from the very beginning. Um, I always like to start with one thing uh, for a couple of reasons. When you give a presentation, they tell me it's good to get audience involvement if you can. So, uh, Walter, you're excluded from this question, but how many of you, can anybody tell me, how many houses uh, Habitat for Humanity has given away in its history? Anyone? Not hearing any guesses, and I'll tell you the answer. We got a guess of one million. The answer is zero. We do not give away houses. We partner with families to help them become homeowners. They pay for their homes, but they do not have to pay interest. Now, let's see if I can get this thing to... Kind of giving you a little brief description, but what Habitat for Humanity is, it's a Christian ministry to help people have better homes. Uh, our motto is, no more shacks, and we build homes that are simple, decent, and affordable, and the families pay for them. The key is that we use volunteer labor for the construction, and we don't charge any interest. Habitat for Humanity International is a nonprofit organization, and it has uh, affiliates around the world. As you can see from the slide, it does seek to improve housing. That's not good. <laughs> I remarked about my lack of coordination here trying to talk, and, and, and I wasn't astute enough to get a, a paper copy of this. I did go over it before we came. But Habitat does invite people of, of all backgrounds. We work with people of all faiths uh, or people of no faith, but we are unabashedly a Christian ministry. Uh, we think that it is, is our mission to help people to have improved housing situations. Habitat was formed uh, in 1976 by Millard Fillmore, Millard Fuller, and his wife is Linda, and they are no longer associated with Habitat for Humanity International. Uh, Habitat has built and repaired over a million homes throughout the world. The figures are that 6.8 million people have found a, a better, safer, more comfortable place to live. And as I illustrated before, it's not a giveaway program. Here are some examples of houses. Simple, decent, and affordable in the United States is not the same as simple, decent, and affordable in some third world countries. Here are some examples of various places uh, where homes have been built. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner uh, an example of one built right here in Montgomery County, Kansas. Still, the needs are great. There are a lot of people. It's surprising to me, one of the biggest surprises that I've found in working with Habitat for Humanity is getting people to come and apply for a home. They think that it's a, uh, that it's 
it's for someone else. It's, it's not for them because they have an income. Uh, they think that it uh, has some kind of strings attached to, or they don't want to give us the information that we have to have to make sure that they qualify. Uh, there's some staggering figures about how many people in this country live in poverty, the richest nation in the world by a wide margin. And uh, five point one million Americans paying more than half of their income for their housing, uh, and that's, I think, from the figures I remember from when I was in college, that's about twice as much as it should be. If you're paying half of your income for your housing, it should be more like a fourth to a third. Uh, so if you're paying half, you're going to be stretched for everything else. The number of affordable units uh, continues to shrink. We've all heard of the housing bubble. Uh, you may have heard on the news that it wasn't real. Well, it was real, and it burst in the and the results were catastrophic across the country. Here in, in Montgomery County, uh, Habitat for Humanity, or this affiliate, was, was started, and the key person who was behind it, I guess you'd say the spearhead, was Dr. George Belcher. Uh, and I don't even think I ever called him George. He always just been Doc, Doc Belcher. And, he, he was, I'd say, the spearhead that got it started. Um, I mentioned selecting a partner family. That is the first step. We select a family so that we know what sort of house to build. Now, so far in Montgomery County, the houses we've built have all been very similar because the families have all been similar in nature. But if we found a, if we found a partner family that had uh, issues such as handicap, it would be handicap accessible. If it was a large family, it would be a larger house. And there are definitely guidelines to go along with that. Um, We have built five homes since the inception. Uh, there's one in Independence, there's one in Cherryvale. Uh, there are three in Coffeyville, and the next one is going to be here in Independence. Um, and I think that we have a family selected. I've not talked to the family selection committee chairman recently, but I know that we had one that family that I thought was a very good candidate. Here's a little sample of, of the simplicity of the floor plan. A um, local architect here uh, has, has worked with us from the beginning. John Heckman Associates have been very cooperative. And we work with donors and volunteers, partner families. We build simple, decent, affordable housing. We, the organization, are responsible for uh, legal matters, working out uh, the funding. When we, when we partner with a family, when the house is complete, there is a closing, just like it would be if they, if they qualified for a, a conventional mortgage. Only if they qualify for a conventional mortgage, you're not eligible to partner with us. Uh, but all of that is the same. We, uh, upon completion of the house, we have it appraised, and there is a, a mortgage for that appraised value, and there is another mortgage for the actual cost. They pay off the mortgage that's for the actual cost with no interest, and the mortgage for the appraised value steps down as time goes on, and that's to prevent people from profiteering 
uh, making a, a big, big profit, getting the house and selling it a few months later for several thousand dollars more than what it, it cost. They'd have to pay off the larger mortgage. We work on a volunteer basis. There are no paid employees in our organization. Uh, a partner families must, when they agree to partner with us, agree to invest sweat equity. We make no profit on the houses. They just pay for what they cost. And our homes have run around $50,000 each. And most of them have appraised, I think, between seventy and eighty thousand dollars, so it's a it's a good deal. We write the mortgage. Or we have them all the way from from fifteen, maybe even ten. I don't. That says seven. I didn't know we had one at seven, but we do have one at thirty, and I know that we have some at fifteen or twenty. And the first house that was built here in Independence is coming close to being paid off. We would urge anyone who is interested or if you know anyone that you think might qualify, encourage them to apply. We have to assess the level of need and there has to be an income stream where they can make the payments on the no interest loan. We are non-discriminatory. The fund, the, the payments that people make on their houses goes into what we call a fund for humanity. And that fund can only be used to build additional houses. Uh, all of the other operating expenses have to come from fundraising. So that's why fundraising has to go on even though we have a revolving fund that will pretty well cover the cost of building a new home. We still have to take care of all of our postage and telephone and, and all that kind of thing. How can you help? You can donate money. That's a tax deductible donation, by the way. You can donate labor. Whenever we get into the construction mode, we're always in the need for labor. You can donate materials. Um, that gets it to be a kind of a sticky situation. Sometimes people want to donate materials that we don't need or can't use. Uh, but even then, if you have something to donate, there is a, uh, at a there's a facility called Restore. We don't have one here, but there is one in Joplin. And sometimes if you have materials, they can be donated to the Restore and they are used to build other habitat homes. You can volunteer to be on one of our committees or on our, our board, and we would we are always in need of people who are, who are uh, concerned about the housing needs of others, who are uh, wanting to be a part of a ministry that we think positively impacts people and who can come to a meeting once a month and help us make good decisions. Or if you have a particular area of expertise, if you know about construction, you may want to serve on the construction committee. If you're good at finance, you might want to, to serve on the fundraising committee. There are ways that you can help, and we would appreciate it. You can offer your prayers, and this is a very important part. Um, and I thank you. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of people in the audience that um, are interested in Habitat for Humanity and will be 
um, speaking to you afterwards and, and um, have an interest in volunteering. That's what Independence is known for, is their volunteerism. So um, I look forward to seeing um, that project unfold in our community. We were talking about Habitat for Humanity at our board meeting, and after our board meeting um, was over, the general manager of Textron Aviation came up and said, could you please send me those gentlemen's contact information? Textron wants to get involved. We're deeply involved in Habitat for Humanity and our other locations, and so I know if she hasn't already that Carrie Peterson will be reaching out to you, and um, you will be hearing from Textron Aviation. And speaking of them, um, we have another speaker from Textron Aviation with us this morning. Last month we heard from Andrew Perry, and um, this month we will be hearing from a gentleman that we heard from about this time last year talking about the summer intern project at, Ses at, not, at Textron Aviation. So please welcome back John Ballinger. Good morning. Thank you, Lisa. So um, last year, so one little side note about the Habitat community. So we've done a lot of that work in Wichita in the past with our, and so it's been a great project. Uh, I've been a part of it for multiple years. Um, it's really a great thing uh, to see that happen and come through. So look forward to uh, working. Thank you. Seeing that in Independence. Um, so going on with the uh, internship program and uh, information there. So we'll. Uh, so last year, uh, last couple of years, we've had some internship programs come through our facility out there, and uh, we worked through a project with the Pocket Parks. Um, so this year, we've got five interns that have come in this year. Um, we've got a couple of community projects that we're working on this year. Um, so one of them is some photos around the Independence Museum. So um, our historical museum here, the 22nd and the 29th. So our interns went out there, did some cleanup, some reorganization. Um, you can kind of see some things they've done around there. So they really got involved. So one of the neat things about this internship program, too, is we're actually bringing people in from outside the community as well. So they're getting involved in the community projects. Um, they're as far away from you know, Indiana and different folks. Um, handful of these folks are actually down and uh, graduating out of OSU, so they'll be coming in, and some of these folks get converted over into full-time employees, so that brings new people into the community as well, and this helps get some involvement. Um, the, uh, another project we're getting ready to work on here, just a couple other shots, some other different things, so, uh, so that's pretty Pretty neat. They, they've been really excited and getting involved and uh, working really hard to help tidy up and clean up a few things. The second project that they're going to work on is a Christmas in July program. They're doing uh, care packages for the military. So they're getting ready to work that next week and start putting together some care packages. Uh, there's a unit out of uh, Topeka that they're going to be supporting this year. So you'll see a lot of that activity around the plant next week and, and things. So. Uh, some of the projects, so as we get into the community projects as well, but some of the projects that they're working on out the plant, um, they're actually working on an application now that, as an app that you can actually track your airplane as it goes through the build process. So that's kind of some neat little things that are kind of going on in the development behind the scenes. And then a visual uh, factory plan is another project that they're working on. So as an aircraft gets built and goes through the process, you'll actually have a couple different ways to look at it, but the app will be really cool to be able to actually track your airplane as it's going through the build process. Um, so that'll be something you can share with customers and things when they come to the communities. Um, another addition I wanted to throw in on, on top of the internship program is uh, this year we've done a summer hire program as well. Um, so one of the things around the community, this is uh, Linda and or Melinda and Mike uh, Simpson. They uh, they've been here in Independence before, and they live locally here in Montgomery County. That's uh, three generations um, out at the plant. So what we did is we're bringing in uh, high school high school folks, uh, part of the uh, summer program that we have out there. So we've got a grandfather, mom and dad, and a son all three uh, out there at the plant this summer working through uh, projects and such. So it's kind of a way to build family, but also build in just some of the younger kids coming out of high school and getting them involved and getting them to understand a little bit about aviation. So um, other than that, we have 13 of those folks out there this summer uh, working for us. So 
a little bit on the end if there's uh, if you have folks that you know that are interested in getting involved and wanting to get a part of the program, um, you can go out on the Textron website. Uh, they can apply. So we start our internship recruiting uh, here coming up pretty quick as the summer ends and the fall begins. We'll start our recruiting projects going in for next year, for next summer's program. So if anyone's interested, they can go out and apply, and uh, we start through an interview process and a selection process as well. So any questions, I'll be around afterwards. And if anybody has any questions about the program. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We enjoy having those summer interns in the in the community making a difference. You know, they were. They were hard at work last year in the pocket parks, and it's nice to see their involvement in the Historical Museum and Art Center. I'm sure that they were greatly appreciated. Um, so it's, let's move on. It's time for um, another set of speakers. Um, we have two ladies from Independence Community College who are here to speak to us about a program um, that we are um, uh, very, very excited about at the, at the chamber. You know, one of the things that um, we value in our community is our education. It's a big economic driver. When people are looking to start business, move to independence, they want to know about our school systems. And, um, and one of the things that they're always excited to hear about is the fact that we have a community college in our community and one that offers some um, continuing education and a part of quality of life with all of the um, uh, theater and the sporting events that go on. And so um, it's exciting for the chamber to be able to partner with the college in bringing um, forth a program that will include all of us in the room. And um, here to tell us more about CP2 is uh, Brittany Thornton and Rebecca Pites. Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Figure out how to work this thing. Okay, so we're going to talk today a little bit about the Community Pirate Partnership. We're very, very excited about this opportunity. We think it's going to be great for our out-of-state students to have this opportunity with our community members. So what is CP2? Um, basically what it is is a program that's going to be dedicated to our out-of-state students to make sure that they feel like they're part of this community whenever they get here. What does being a host family involve? Well, basically what we're going to be doing is asking that our host families meet with our students two times per month. Now that can be taking them out to Walmart. It can be having them over for a meal, letting them come over and do their homework while they're, um, so they can get off campus. These kids go through quite a bit of a culture shock. Um, we have students that come from Atlanta, come from Miami, um, huge metropolitan areas that come to Independence, which is a wonderful little community, but a lot of these kids have never even seen a cow before, so it can be a lot for them. So um, it's really just about making sure that they feel connected to Independence, that they feel like they have a person while they're here. Okay, so we also wanted to investigate what the response has been at other schools. It seems like a lot of schools have really had a positive experience, not only the families, but the students as well. So um, from what I've heard, it just seems to be great. Uh, I was actually speaking with a student yesterday. His mom was dropping him off from South Carolina. She was very clearly extremely, extremely nervous about leaving her baby boy all the way in Kansas. So I just started talking to her a little bit about the CP2 program, and you could just see the relief on her face. She's like, that is exactly what we need, somebody that um, he can go to if he has any issues, if he has any questions, just to get away, somebody that you know he can look up in the stands and see a friendly face. So that's really what we're shooting for. And meeting with the student, he was an awesome, awesome kid, and any family would be extremely, extremely lucky to get to know him as well. So frequently asked questions, how do you apply? So if this is something that you're interested in, you can go to our website, www.ndcc.edu, and fill out an application there. I also have put uh, sign-up sheets on all the tables. So if this is something that you're interested in or if you'd like more information about it, please put um, your first and last name and then contact information, and somebody on the CP2 committee will be in touch with you. 
So do you get to choose your student? You absolutely do. So you can choose uh, whether the student is a male or a female. You can choose what activities they're involved in, if it's athletics, if it's um, fine arts, if it's debate, whatever it may be. This is a great year to be doing this because our fine arts department is growing every single year. Our debate team went to nationals again last year, which is amazing, and athletics is always very exciting. So it's a great time to start this partnership with the community. We ask right now that um, host families takes two students just to make the process a little bit easier for the student. Sometimes they can feel a little out of place with um, adults, so having a friend right next to them will make the transition a little bit smoother. So, fair question, what do you have to do, how much is it going to cost you, those kinds of questions. It was really completely up to you. We are blessed with such an awesome community with so many, you know, going to the zoo, going to the park, um, Niwala, so many awesome events that we have in this community that you can take students to do, like I said, just to get them off campus or bring them over to your house and let them do some laundry. Anything will be great to them, trust me. If it's not working out with one of your students, that is okay. We want to make sure people know that um, we are here. The CP2 committee is here. We're also going to create a Facebook group so um, the different host families can interact and communicate to see what maybe activities they're doing with their host student um, and what is kind of going on and how they're doing. And if you need any support, we're here as well as other host families. All right, so uh, if anybody has any questions, you can contact any member of the CP2 committee. Um, our contact information is there, and I'll also be around after if anybody has any questions. We would just like to reiterate what an awesome experience that this is going to be and how excited we are to have um, our awesome community members work with our students. So uh, it's definitely going to be an opportunity to make a difference in a student's life. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So who all is interested in CP2? Raise your hand. Raise, yay! So be sure and fill out those forms that are on your table so that we can get all of those um, students plugged in with somebody in our community. Okay, it is time for our last speaker of the day. I'm excited to introduce her to you. Um, it's fun to bring kids back to the community that were um, raised in independence and love it so much that they want to come back and make it their home. Um, it's nice to see young professionals make that decision to, to come back. Um, this particular individual I've known almost all her life. Um, I taught her Sunday school when she was a little girl. And, um, and then she, she grew up, and, and now we're working together. So with that, please welcome our new tourism coordinator, Courtney Volker. Good morning. Like Lisa said, my name is Courtney Volker, and I'm the new tourism coordinator with the Independence Chamber of Commerce Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I lived in Independence when I was younger, and I've decided to move back to town, purchase my first home, and get involved in a community that I have always loved. I went to school in Independence, Neotiche, and graduated from Riley County High School in 2011. And I've always loved travel and tourism, as well as event planning. So after high school, I attended Kansas State University, where I majored in hospitality management for meeting, convention, and event planning. Throughout my college career, I had numerous summer internships within the scope of event planning, in Colorado, Texas, as well as in Manhattan during the school year. After graduating from K-State in 2015, I spent five months in the Disney College program, working as a vacation planner at Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. And this gave me the opportunity, opportunity to work with a hugely diverse group of individuals and gain valuable experience. After returning from Florida, I had the opportunity to stay with the clothing company I'd worked for during college, and so I moved to Garden City, Kansas to be the assistant manager until I took over at the Salina location. Recently, I decided I wanted to get back into my passion for hospitality, tourism, and event planning, so I started to search for opportunities. This position opened up at the perfect time as I was kind of toying around with the idea of moving back to the area to be closer to my family because I had been away from them for a long time. Both my parents and my sister live in the area and work in town. And every time I came home to visit, I was just so much happier, and I loved all that Independence had to offer, especially for a young professional such as myself, so I decided to make it home once again. I'm excited to get involved in event planning to bring outsiders into Independence, 
finding ways to showcase our baseball history, planning bus tours through town, as well as working with um, Tabitha and Main Street to um, bring out-of-town guests for day trips as well as overnight stays. Lisa and I have been visiting with the hotel owners, and I will be maintaining a relationship with all of our hotels, as well as filling brochure racks we have placed around town. I have a lot of ideas, but I'd also love to hear from you guys. Um, so feel free to shoot me an email, give me a call, stop by the Chamber office to chat. Um, and I will look forward to speaking to you again at future First Fridays um, about tourism projects. Thank you. Courtney and I have a lot in common. So um, when somebody, I introduce myself to somebody and I say I'm Lisa Wilson and they're like, they just have that puzzled look. And I say, well, I'm Charlotte Muse's daughter. Oh, yeah. And so I hear on the phone all the time, Courtney will answer, yes, Julie Volker is my mom. So, yeah, which is a huge compliment. So we're both lucky to have good moms. Um, okay, so it is time for some shout-outs, one-minute announcements. So what we'd like to do is have you um, come forward right here. We'll turn on the cordless mic so that um, they can catch it for the video production. And um, I know that we have Susie Kleinbeck and Don Farthing. Um, so if you guys want to come on up here and anyone else who'd like to take a, a second to give a little community shout-out, we'll take care of that. Independence has a real asset in the Ash Center indoor pool. But unfortunately, there are times when the pool is closed because of repairs. There will be a meeting on July the 11th at noon at Annie Mays uh, to discuss some of the issues because we want to show our support. So please come if you have an interest in a year-round indoor pool. Thank you. Susie? July 11th at noon. Annie Mays. Okay. Well, Lisa stole my thunder a little bit. Uh, talking about the Mid-Continent Band and the concerts that we're giving this summer, we're having a really, really great summer. Uh, the highlight, I think, of our summer is going to be August 1st, which is before our next uh, uh, first Friday. On the August the 1st, the band invites the community to come out, and we are going to celebrate the 125th season of the Mid-Continent Band, continuous for 125 years. We think we're one of the oldest in Kansas as far as the, and I'm not quite that old yet, but uh, anyway, they, there uh, is another band in southwest Kansas, the Dodge City Cowboy Band. And I think it's been going since the 1870s or something like that. But uh, we would invite all of you to come out. We're going to have a special concert. It's going to be a little more lengthy than some of the concerts because to get in all the things we want to do, uh, it'll take a little longer than our usual hour concerts. But we enjoy doing this for the community. Uh, we're going to partner with the city on doing the uh, uh, Veterans Day concert of some sort. Uh, not sure yet what we will do, but we'll do something there. But come out August 1st to the park and enjoy a, a spectacular evening of music. Thank you. Got one more, anyone else? Just make your way on up here. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Um, I just wanna say a quick shout out from Four Paws and say thank you to um, some community members who came out for our Love the Park event um, we were a small group, but we were a mighty group, and um, especially want to thank you, um, thank Andrew Demo, um, Jim Thornburg, uh, he works at Woods Lumber, so if you go into Woods, say thank you, Jim, um, Paul Hannigan, park staff. If you've not been to the park um, in the playground and you have a toddler or a small child, you need to go because we put up what's called an expression swing where the parent can sit on one side facing your toddler on the other, and you can swing together. And Four Paws funded that, and it is um, up and ready for use right now. So thank you to um, those individuals that came and helped, and everybody go swing.
Thank you. It is. It's really cool. I just wanted to reiterate those financial seminars I'd mentioned earlier. They are going to be at Brothers Railroad Inn on um, the 17th of this month at 6.15. Uh, the other one will be on the 18th down at Landings in Coffeeville, and those are free. No obligation. We'd love for anybody to come. I, I also, I, I left out, so I'm going to very quickly. We also do, um, we do uh, dental and we do vision plans. And I, I meant to mention that. As soon as I sat down, I started thinking of all the things I was going to say, and I didn't. Um, also, we, we do not do auto, and we do not do home. So, uh, but we're very happy to refer you to one of the fine agencies here in town that does those things. So, again, thank you. Appreciate you coming out, and uh, very much enjoy being sponsored today. So, thanks. Thank you, Michael. Anybody else? All right. Well, on behalf of the Chamber and the City of Independence, we want to thank all of our great speakers. We always have lots of good information ready to share with you, and next month will be no different. And we want to thank our um, business sponsor, Gary Skank, and thank you, Michael Anderson, for your presentation and Skank Insurance Agency. And please join us next month, which will be Friday, August the 4th. And be sure and take your community calendars with you and have a great weekend.